echolocation. Have you ever shouted hello into an empty room or wide outdoor canyon? The sound of your voice travels to the air. It actually becomes a sound wave. It hits the first object that it meets, in this case, the wall of the room or the floor of the canyon. This creates an echo or a sound that comes back to you. The echo actually tells you a great deal about the object that was hit. For example, if the room is small or the canyon is shallow, the sound hits the wall or floor and comes back to you quickly. If the room is bigger or the canyon is deeper, the echo takes a longer time to return. This process is called echolocation, and people aren't the only ones who use it. Certain species of animals do it too. In fact, some animals are incredibly skilled at using echolocation. They use echoes to learn about the size, shape, and position of everything in their environment. Bats are one species that use echolocation. These small flying creatures have a wingspan of about 7 inches and weigh 1 to 2 ounces. Many people think bats are blind, but that's not true. Most bats can see. However, they live in dark caves and hunt their prey at night. These conditions make it difficult to use their eyesight. Bats eat mosquitoes and other insects, such as flies and beetles. How do they find such tiny prey in the dark? They use echolocation. First, the bat, the bat sends out high-pitched noises. These noises travel through the air. They bounce off objects they meet in the environment, such as mosquitoes or flies. This creates an echo. Based on the echo, the bat knows just where to find its prey. Another animal that uses echolocation is the sperm whale. These giants of the sea are quite different from bats. Whales live in the ocean and grow to about 60 feet in length. That's longer than a school bus. Sperm whales weigh between 35 and 45 tons and eat about one ton of fish per day. Sperm whales live and hunt in the deepest parts of the ocean. They often dive into the water that's deeper than 100 feet where there is little to no light. So how do the whales find their dinner? That's right, they use echolocation. Whales make noises that sound like deep clangs. These noises travel through the water in much the same way that sound travels through air. When the clang hits an object, the echo comes back to the whale. The echo tells the whale all about the object. Whales are so skilled at echolocation that scientists believe they can find objects as small as a kernel of corn. Number one, echolocation is important to sperm whales so they can A, swim, B, find food, C, find a mate, D, avoid ships. Number two, which detail from the text best supports your answer to question one? A, another animal that uses echolocation is a sperm whale. B, whales live in the ocean and grow up to 60 feet in length. That's longer than a school bus. C, how do whales find their dinner? That's right, they use echolocation. D, when the clang hits an object, the echo comes back to the whale. Number three, according to echolocation, which detail best supports how echolocation helps animals? A, this creates an echo or a sound that comes back to you. B, they use echoes to learn about the size, shape, and position of everything in their environment. C. So how do whales find their dinner? That's right, they use echolocation. D. Whales make noises that sound like deep clangs. Number four. Which of these statements is false about bats? A. They have a wingspan of about seven inches. B. They weigh one to two ounces. C. They are all blind. D. They live in dark caves. Number five, read the sentence from the first paragraph. Have you ever shouted hello into an empty room or wide open canyon? Which of these best describes why the author began the paragraph with this sentence? A, 
to explain how echolocation works, B, to make the reader think about something that will help them understand echolocation, C, to show readers that echolocation is effective in canyons, D, to provide an interesting story to get readers interested in the passage.